All right. This is a poem called Theories of Time and Space. And when I read that title, I thought about time travel because I like time travel stuff. And the whole question of can you go back in time and change things? Can you go? We're, we're always moving forward in time. That's like time travel. And the fact that you can never do anything tomorrow, like this assignment needs to be done today. You can't do it tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be today again. You'll never get to tomorrow. So don't say you'll do this tomorrow because you won't. Natasha Trethaway, born in 1966, she's two years younger than I am, has been a state poet laureate of Mississippi and a United States poet laureate. That means the official poet. And she's won a Pulitzer Prize. Her poems combine reflections about the history of African Americans in Mississippi with her own experience growing up biracial in the South. Trethaway wrote Theories of Time and Space as the introduction to her book of poems, Native Guard. That title refers to the Louisiana Native Guards, a group of black Union soldiers who watched over imprisoned Confederate soldiers on Ship Island off the coast of Mississippi. Now, this is important. This island used to be a prison island for Confederate soldiers. Like the other poems in the collection, Theories of Time and Space takes readers on a tour of the American South while pondering how the passage of time makes everything different than what came before. And so that's that whole kind of time travel element. As we move forward, we get further and further away from the way things were in the past. Let's watch a video. The American South. Palm trees dance in the wind, an ocean like bath water. Sunsets over the gulf, the sky's ever-changing light. Highway 49 stretches on for mile after lonely mile. These are all images of Natasha's childhood. As a poet, she finds inspiration in it all. How does home become something more? When can it become poetry? Find out. Read the poem, Theories of Time and Space, by Natasha Trethaway. The thing about these videos, they usually don't tell us a lot, but they do give us some images to look at. Now, let's look at some vocabulary. Hmm, nothing there. All right, let's move on. Here is the poem, and you'll notice that these aren't really couplets. A couplet is when you have two lines that rhyme with each other. But this is divided up into little two line pieces. Does that mean anything? You know, we always get asked that question about the format of the poem. And anything I did, I would just be making up. See, the thing about poetry is that unless you've actually spoken to the poet or they've written out the answers, then you only guess what the poem means and what's going on. Like these two line things, if I were to turn this poem sideways, it would look like parts of a pier, like in this picture up here. Or sometimes at the beach, to keep you from driving onto the beach, it has put posts in the ground. Now, does she mean that to be that way? Who knows? But it's logical. And whenever you interpret something, you just have to be logical about it. You can't do some craziness. Here's her poem. You can get there from here, though there's no going home. Everywhere you go will be somewhere you've never been. Try this. Head south on Mississippi 49, one by one, mile markers ticking off another minute of your life. Maybe those are mile markers. Follow this to its natural conclusion. Dead end at the coast, the pier at Gulfport, where riggings of shrimp boats are loose stitches in a sky-threatening rain. Cross over the man-made be beach, 26 miles of sand dumped on the mangrove swamp, buried terrain of the past. Bring only what you must carry, tome of memory, its random blank pages. 
on the dock where you board the boat for Ship Island, someone will take your picture. The photograph, who you were, will be waiting when you return. So you can read this again and again by yourself. I'm going to work up backwards a little bit. So this photograph is a picture of who you were. Even though it may have only been an hour earlier, it's no longer who you are now. It's who you were an hour ago. And you've just done something that's changed who you are. The It's going to ask about Tome of Memory, and you can't click on it and get a definition. So you're going to, it's going to ask you what you think that means. I'll give you a hint. It has blank pages in it. What else do you know that has pages in it? Okay, we go back to the top. Um, there's no going home. When I was in college, I'd come home on the weekends. And when I was in my second year of teaching, I actually went home and lived at home. But it wasn't the same because I wasn't 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I was 26 years old living at home. So it, it wasn't the same. I, I was home, but it wasn't the same. It's still my home, don't get me wrong. Um, but I wasn't the same. My parents weren't the same. The uh, living arrangement wasn't the same. It was very different. There's an old saying that says you can never go home again because it won't ever be the same. There's also a great poem. I'm turning off this heater under my desk. There's also a great poem about this guy who does go home and everything seems smaller to him. Maybe you notice that when you revisit our cafeteria and you said, it wasn't like this when I was in elementary school. It's because we change. The second little stanza, everywhere you go will be somewhere you've never been. Even if you've actually been there before, it has changed. You have changed. Nothing's the same. There's a saying, you can't put your foot in the same river twice because that water has already moved past. When you stick your foot in again, that's different water. The water has already moved away. Well, now she gives us some directions. She says, get on Mississippi 49. That's the freeway like I-45 or 610 or I-10. And just keep driving, keep driving. And every mile you pass takes off a minute of your life. That means they're driving how fast? 60 miles an hour. It says, keep on going and you're going to reach a dead end. Now that's got two meanings. As you move forward through your life, minute by minute, eventually you're going to reach the end of your life. Likewise, you reach the end of Highway 49. And there at the coast is this pier. There's shrimp boats out there and the riggings. Let's see if I can make this show you. That's all the, uh, boy, that's very annoying. Click that. There we go. Um, if you've ever seen a sailboat, they've got like pirates, like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. All those ropes and things that hang up with the sails and along the, the mast and the crossed peat beams. All that ropes are called the riggings. Anyway, so here's all these shrimp boats. And they're also, on a shrimp boat, used to pull up the nets that they throw overboard to catch the, the shrimp. And she's just describing the scene. The sky is dark like it's going to rain. And then there's a 26-mile a man-made beach because this used to be, it says right here, a swamp. And a mangrove is a tropical tree. But they've dumped sand in there to make a beach, burying the past. You get on the boat, they take you to Ship Island. Somebody says they'll take your picture first. And when you come back, here's a picture of who you were before you visited this island. So this poem is a very, we call it a cerebral poem. It's not concrete. There's a lot of concrete descriptions in there. But its meaning is much deeper and much broader. And it's all about who we are in life and how life changes us and how every day we're different than the day before. And there's a whole lot of deep, deep, deep ideas in there. When you do your questions, the multiple choice, those kind of help you see what they want you to be getting from this. When you look at their answer choices and when you get to your think 
questions. Make sure that you have the four parts you're supposed to have. Answer the question at your topic sentence. Quote the text. Put some actual quotation marks quoted material from the text for your evidence. Explain how these quotes support your topic sentence. And then conclude your answer with a concluding statement. Do all that and do it well and you'll get a good grade.